Hello and a very warm welcome to a fresh edition of Aspire. I'm Vikram here at the BMW Motorrad showroom in Mumbai taking a look at the S1000R. Why? I'm going to tell you in just a bit. But first, here's what's on the show. There's regalia on the table and we're telling you all about it. This Father's Day, if you're looking for a gift for your dad, we've got some ideas from the tech space, whether he's tech savvy or not. We've driven the S350 and we're going to tell you what we make of it. And we're taking you on a ride this week on Aspire. Not on the Aprilia RS V4, nor the KTM RC8, not even the Ninja ZX10R and certainly not the BMW S1000RR. These you know, the iconic superbikes. Aggressive, big built, sporty to the hill. But if you're confined to the city, can you put their thunderous qualities to the test? We think not. You need performance, but you also need ease in control. And you can do without the body panels, the fairing. Say hello to the naked bikes. So what's the fuss about naked bikes? Karthik from the Autocar Show team is here to tell us. Karthik, uh, why so much talk about naked bikes suddenly? I think uh, the beauty of naked bikes is that they're offering you the best of two worlds in the sense that you're getting the performance of uh, the sport bikes. For instance, the S1000R is based on the S1000R sport bike. So you have a lot of performance on tap, but it's a more accessible, easier package to manage in the sense of seating comfort is better, it's uh, more comfortable even in terms of the suspension, power delivery is better. So it's just easier for just about as many situations as you can think about without missing out on the excitement. So easier to ride in the city as well you yes. think? Yes. Who do you think is meant to ride these naked bikes? Because we're seeing quite a flurry of them in the Indian market now. So yeah, you, we are seeing a really a wide range of naked bikes that are, that are being offered here. So there's something really for everyone if you look at it. But a lot of the guys I think who will appreciate a naked are guys who've ridden bikes before, know what they want because they aren't necessarily interested in the image side of it as much as enjoying the motorcycle. Right. Because it's not about looking cool. I mean, these bikes do look cool. But even over here, do you find that it's the Europeans versus the Japanese? You know, very interesting point. I think it's a new era we're in right now, really. There was a time when the Japanese were setting the benchmarks and everybody else had to live up to that match up and somehow catch up. But now, it's quite clear that you look at the European bikes, they are the ones who are laying down the rules and setting the benchmarks. So this is definitely one of the most exciting roadsters you can buy in the world. Right. Not just in India. I mean, it's a beautiful bike. And it's one of its competitors, which is again a fascinating motorcycle, is the KTM 1290 Super Duke R, which is again a European manufacturer. And well, you have many exciting bikes from Europe which are laying down the law, so to speak. This is a four-cylinder 999cc bike. Yes. Tell us what works for it. Well, this is basically the same motor as on the S1000RR, but it's been retuned, let's say, to, like I was telling you, to get more drivability. So low speed, you have more response from the engine without having to really crack it open. But at the same time, it's got 160 horsepower. The S1000RR is about 192. So it has a huge amount of power, more than anything else that's available on the market today. But what really makes it so beautiful is how it delivers it. It's creamy smooth, right from 2000 RPM, it just starts going. You can enjoy this bike immediately and that's fascinating. I love those kind of bikes. Design-wise, you can see that typical quirky BMW design where half of the bike, you can see, you know, the headlamp, this side is different from the headlamp, this side. Correct. Yeah. Yes, and so there is a little bit of quirkiness over there. Yeah, which is very typically BMW. Even the fairings, if you look at this side's fairing is different from that side's yeah, fairing. Right. So, this is a 
very essentially BMW quirky design traits and I think it gives the bike a very individualistic character, you know. It comes at 25 lakhs, that is almost the price of a 1 series. <laughs> what are you getting for that kind of money? Yes, it is very expensive but it's not overpriced. For this money, you're getting the best electronic package that you, I mean, probably the best electronic package you can get. I mean, in terms of equipment, you've got a quick shifter. So when you're riding hard, you don't have to pull in the clutch. You just go and it's into the next gear. You have traction control, you have power modes, and you have something that nobody else has right now, any other manufacturer has in the market today, which is electronically adjustable suspension on a motorcycle. Right. So you can actually shift between soft, normal, and hard, depending on uh, how you're riding and what, what mood you're in. Anybody who's ridden a big bike before and has probably has a sport bike will be blown away with this because the performance is I don't, I mean, there's very little missing when compared to the S1000R. So some would say that many of these facets are available in other bikes that don't cost as much as well. Take us through some of them because I believe the Japanese don't do too badly for themselves. Yeah. Kawasaki has options. In the Kawasaki Z1000 and that costs about 10 lakh rupees less than this. Very strong motor but not necessarily as flexible. It, it, it's very aggressive in its attitude so it needs, it definitely needs a more experienced rider at the helm and that's also because the way it's set up, the chassis, the way it handles needs a more slightly more tuned mindset to riding, sport riding. A lot of it, like you started out by saying, is about making an impression. How far does the Z1000 oh, do that? That, that I, I, I have to admit, the way that bike looks is, it, it, it'll leave you speechless. First time you look at it and you just think, man, that's not a bike, that's, that's the bike version of the Transformer series, you know. The headlamps with the projector beam, the LEDs, and you got, it's got cat-like slits, it just looked incredibly, incredibly intense. There are people who are just starting out as bikers and yet they want something that's cutting edge. Uh, at the entry level, are we seeing something exciting? Triumph's Street Triple. Right. It's an incredible package. It's light. It has a 675cc motor, but it's got enough horsepower, enough flexibility from the engine for everyday riding, for sport riding. It's comfortable and at the same time, it's committed when you're riding hard as well. It's really a staggering package. Triumph has a very, again, a very typical Triumph style of doing the roadsters. So it is clearly a naked motorcycle, very minimalistic in the sense that the headlamps are just sticking out by themselves at the front and they've this is the second generation of the Street Triple, so it's got a slightly different design. Again, looks a bit quirky, but uh, either love it or hate it, it's kind of like that. Again, true to Roadster styling, isn't too aggressive. It is sporty, I won't say it's sit upright, it is sporty a little bit, but a great balance between aggressiveness and comfort. So this entire trend of mixing your sportiness of a bike and turning it into the kind of roadsters that we have seen, is that trend likely to continue? What next in this trend? I think for sure it's, uh, it's, it's not something that's just for India, obviously. It's all over the world. People want motorcycles that are easier to use. They don't want something that has 200 horsepower all the time. They want something that's usable every day and yet fun. Right. So people want friendlier bikes in that sense and these bikes really do fit the bill for that. Right. So you will see more and more of these kind of motorcycles uh, at just about every displacement class, every price point uh, going forward. You know there are ardent bikers Karthik who are into collecting bikes. They have quite a collection already and one more wouldn't hurt. So within the current crop of roadsters, which one make it to the collector's list? So since this is Aspire, I think I won't stop at one. I'll add, make it a list again of naked bikes that you should have probably. Uh, right on top of the list, the priciest of the lot. This I would, one? I would definitely have the S1000R if I could spend the money on it. And at the other end of the spectrum, we have the Street Triple, which this Triumph, I think, is a beautiful package if you're not looking for something too fast, too aggressive. 
and one bike now which is not in India yet, the KTM 1290 Super Duke R, a visceral motorcycle, not just again in terms of the design but even in the way it performs. Karthik, thanks very much uh, for joining us with that. Of course, uh, the focus does remain on cars. Only last week, we told you about the launch of the S350. Uh, it is out and we've had a chance to drive it as well. Here's what we make of it. That S-Class, a cutting-edge machine for sure, just like the bike that I'm on right now. We take a little breather here on this edition of Aspire. Lots more coming up. There's regalia on the table and we're telling you all about it. This Father's Day, if you're looking for a gift for your dad, we've got some ideas from the tech space, whether he's tech-savvy or not. <laughs> 